All right, we've been talking about Henri all week, uh, and it was here. It brought some rain, but what it really brought tonight is that fog. Huh? Oh, yeah, fog <laughs> has been the big story uh, for the last couple of hours now. It's been pretty dense out there. Here's a quick recap of Henri. We're not done just yet, Zach. We still have a couple <laughs> more days to go before we can finally say goodbye to Henri. Uh, the official landfall happened today in Westerly, Rhode Island. This is the second tropical storm to make landfall in Westerly this year. The other one was July 9th. That would have been Tropical Storm Elsa. This happened at 1215 today. Wind was 60 miles an hour at landfall. Movement uh, to the north at 12 miles an hour. So it slowed down as it moved over land, which is pretty atypical. That's what makes Henri a little different compared to what we tend to see with tropical systems in New England. Here's a quick comparison. Bob in 1991, which of course everybody goes to for a comparison for New England hurricanes. That was a category two when it made landfall in Newport, Rhode Island with winds of 100 miles an hour. The movement was northeast at 35 miles an hour and it was accelerating. Henri, of course, made landfall as a tropical storm, 60 mile an hour winds in westerly Rhode Island, and it was decelerating as it moved over land. And we can actually still pick that out Currently, the storm center is located over Litchfield County, Connecticut, and the Berkshires in western Massachusetts. And the forecast track from here on out actually takes it near Albany, New York, back across Massachusetts before it enters the Gulf of Maine. And of course, this is going to have implications on our weather for the next 48 hours. Beyond that, though, we do really start to clear things back out. Here's what we've got going on right now. A lot of that moisture getting pushed through central New York. Syracuse area starting to see some flash flood warnings pop. The Philadelphia area uh, all the way to Scranton also dealing with flash flood warnings right now as heavy rain continues to move through. Locally, we've got some showers, especially down east, and we've got this one lone shower north of Bangor that I'm watching as it makes its way toward the Millinocket and Katahdin areas. I'm going to keep an eye on that one. Good news is I still don't think we're going to have to really worry about severe weather with this. Even tomorrow, uh, things will be improving. Wave heights have improved. We did get this one rogue nine footer down east uh, closer to MDI, but I think that all in all, wave heights will be down as we get into the day tomorrow. Showers continue overnight. Fog lingers. Mostly cloudy skies expected. Temperatures staying in the 60s. Of course, that's where the dew points are, too. So it feels very sticky and muggy outside. And that's part of why we have so much fog, especially at the coastline. Tomorrow afternoon, another round of showers looks likely as the circulation actually starts to move a little farther to our south. It is going to push moisture back on shore, and we could end up with some really heavy showers, especially down east, before the entire system exits off to our east. These rain totals, I did update this map to show a little bit more rain down east tomorrow. This includes the rain that we've already seen today. I pushed the two inch range back just a little bit. I think Sanford to Freiburg still could see totals of around two inches. Storm total for Portland and Lewiston, I'm expecting one to two inches and about an inch in Augusta, half inch in Bangor. On removes on, warm air returns in its wake on Wednesday. High temperatures Wednesday forecast to make it close to 90 degrees. And then as we get into the uh, remainder of the week, we'll be talking about the threat for some thunderstorms on Thursday. Approaching cold front, depending on the timing of this as it runs into that very warm and moist air mass on Wednesday, could allow for some stronger thunderstorms. I'm not so sure that we're actually going to see that, though, because it could actually move through overnight into Friday morning. And behind it, we do turn less humid. The question, of course, is do we end up with onshore flow next weekend, which could implicate the forecast calls for some fog and some gray days as opposed to sunshine. Seas tomorrow four to six feet southeast wind at 10 knots. Some fog in the morning water temperatures in the 60s with small craft advisories out. 83 on Tuesday, 90 Wednesday. Chance for some storms on Thursday. Humidity clears out a little bit on Friday, though. I think Friday is actually going to be a pretty nice evening, maybe the nicest evening that we see all week long. Same idea at the coastline, but I think that will be a little warmer at the coast on Thursday just because it's going to take longer for the front to actually make it to the coastline. And then Saturday looks cooler at the coast. Zach, I'm worried that we'll be talking about uh, wind coming out of the east off the ocean on Saturday which would spell like a gray foggy day at the okay. coast, nicer <laughs> inland. We'll see how it all Just works out. Just what I was about to say, the weekend looked a little promising. <laughs> we'll see. Not so much. I, I don't want to put the horse ahead of the cart here. Cart, uh, ahead, cart of the horse. ahead of the horse. There, there you go. It's 1130. <laughs> Thanks, Mike.